Hey everyone, it's the end of the month, so it's time for my March book haul. I bought 15 books this month. Whoops. Goodbye book buying ban. Which is a massive month for me, so let's jump right in. I was actually doing pretty well with my ban until I unpacked a huge shipment of $5 books at work and my resolve just melted. So with my discount, the first five books that I got cost me just $3.50 each. I grabbed three vintage classics this month. I got the children's version of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens and Kidnapped by Robert Louis Stevenson. And then just the standard red spined edition of Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. I always love the covers on the vintage editions, especially the kids classics. And these are titles I've been meaning to read for ages. I've never actually read anything by Charles Dickens or Jonathan Swift, but I've read two other works by Robert Louis Stevenson and I just love his writing style. I could reread Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde over and over again and I can't recommend his writing enough. So I'm really excited to try a new one of his books. Another book that I got for $3.50 is Rosencrantz and Guildenstern Are Dead, which is a play by Tom Stoppard. You might recognise the title as a line from Hamlet, where acts as a sort of throwaway line to indicate the deaths of these two minor characters. In this play, that situation is flipped, where Rosencrantz and Guildenstern become the main characters, observing snippets of the main plot of Hamlet and giving some insight into the events that could be happening on the wings. I've never been able to see this performed live, but I know it's a favourite play of two of my siblings, so I'm hoping I'll be able to read through this myself and follow along. Apparently it's comparable to Waiting for Godot, which I really struggled with so wish me luck. The next book is one that I'm most excited to have gotten for $3.50 because that's just a steal for how gorgeous it is. This is the 50th anniversary edition of A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. I've heard a lot of mixed opinions about this book. I think it's just one of those ones that you've got to read for yourself so I always intended on picking it up. This came into work marked as damaged. The spine is a little bit loose and the last couple of pages are a little bit crinkled but this retails for £20 and I bought it for $3.50 so to pick it up so cheap was such a steal I couldn't resist when I saw it. I'm not sure when I'll get around to picking this one up but hopefully sometime later in the year. I bought three non-fiction books this month because I've been trying to vary what I'm reading a little bit and I feel that non-fiction is something I've been neglecting. The first one that I picked up is the one that's most interesting to me but probably the least interesting to most other people and that's Governesses, The Life and Times of the Real Jane Eyres by Ruth Brandon. This is essentially an examination of the job governess in the 19th century. We often hear in classics of kids having governesses but because that job doesn't exist anymore I really didn't know that much about it. The modern job title governess is actually given to a sort of tutor who lives on an Australian remote property and helps children who live too far away from a regular school to attend with their schoolwork. I'm actually really interested in trying my hand at governessing next year after I graduate so I thought I should read a little bit about the history of the job and see what I'm getting myself into. A pretty decent length book so I'm not sure if I read it front to back but it should be interesting to have a look through anyway. The second non-fiction book that I picked up is also a pretty niche interest area and that is A Brief History of Cults by Peter Haining. I'm actually really interested in cults and subcultures but before now I've mostly gotten that information from documentaries like Louis Theroux. I have a few books on the subject but most of them are pretty specific, so I thought it might be a good idea to start with one which is sort of a consolidation of a whole bunch of information. This includes case studies of 24 separate cults grouped together roughly by time period. Reading down the list of names, I only recognised maybe a third of the groups, so I'm really excited to refresh my knowledge of those ones and then learn about some brand new groups. Plus this cover is freaky as hell. The last non-fiction book I picked up I've actually already read, and that's Gandhi, A Biography by Kazuki Ebine. This is just a really cool idea and it's actually part of a series where biographies are presented in the form of manga. I own and have already read the one about the Dalai Lama and there's also one about Che Guevara. I'm hoping they're going to continue to expand it. It's actually more of a graphic novel than a manga because it reads in the traditional western style rather than right to left. I'm going to talk about this one more in my wrap up video but while I wasn't really pleased with the way that this one turned out I still think it's a wonderful concept for a series and a wonderful way to open up the lives of these iconic individuals to a whole new audience. I actually read this book years ago and just picked it up this month to complete my collection and that's Son of a Witch by Gregory Maguire. This is the second book in the Wicked Years series which is a very adult focused retelling of The Wizard of Oz and the world surrounding those books. I already own the first and third books in the series. If you've read any of Maguire's works, you know just how complex these fantasy works are. It's been years since I've read Son of a Witch and I knew I'd have no hope of following along with The Line Among Men until I refresh my memory of this one. I've actually already read the rest of the books that I bought this month, so if you want to know what I thought about them, check out my March wrap-up when it goes up sometime this week. Stardust by Neil Gaiman is a short fantasy novel which follows the story of a young man on a quest to retrieve a fallen star to win the hand of the girl he loves. This quest becomes more complicated than he thought when he discovers that the star is in the form of a human girl. This is only the second Neil Gaiman book that I read. I read Coraline a couple of years ago and I loved it and I think I'll definitely be picking up more of his work. I think quite a few have been released in this teeny mass market design so I think I might pick up a couple more next month. 
because this is just fantastic and exceeded all my expectations. I pre-ordered The Madness Underneath by Maureen Johnson months ago and it got released towards the end of February so I got it at the start of this month. This is the second book in the Shades of London series, not a trilogy which is a nice change, and follows on from The Name of the Star which was released in 2011. This is essentially paranormal YA dealing with ghosts and the people who can see them. It's not something I'd usually be interested in but I quite enjoyed the first book so I thought I'd continue with the series. But of course, because it's a book in a series, my covers don't match. I never really liked this cover design anyway, so I'm hoping they re-release it in this format because this one I really love. This is the book that needs no introduction. Of course, it's Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. I just read that it's on the top of a whole bunch of bestseller lists, which is really not surprising with the number of people I've seen reading and reviewing this one. I actually have a spoiler-free review of Clockwork Princess up, so if you want to know what I thought about it, I'll have a link in the description. And lucky Last, a book that I'm almost finished reading and just adoring, Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. I bought this one after reading John Green's rave review of it in the New York Times and I'm definitely not regretting that decision. It took me about 50 pages to get into the story, but I was late to Easter lunch at my grandparents because I could not put this down. This is a young adult romance set in the 1980s about two high school outcasts, Eleanor and Parker, and the story of their relationship. I think this is just going to spread like crazy through booktube. Rincey from Rincey Reads just did a perfect review of this one, so I'll link that down below. I don't think you're going to be able to escape this book in a couple of weeks, but looking at how cute this cover is, I don't think anyone's gonna mind. So that is finally the end of all the books that I purchased this month. I'll put links to the Goodreads page for all the titles down below if you want to learn anything more about them. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I bought this month. I'm really excited to read most of them pretty soon, which of course I say about every book I purchase. But I think most of them should be pretty easy reads, so I'm keen to give them a go and see how many I get through in April. Thanks so much for watching. I hope everyone had a safe, happy, and very, very chocolatey Easter break. Bye!